let t from r3 to r3 be a linear transformation as follows. Now we're being asked here to find a basis for the column space of the linear transformation and to find a basis for the null space of the linear transformation. Now as we begin, let's keep in mind that the column space of a linear transformation is the column space of A, and the null space of a linear transformation is the null space of A, where A is the standard matrix of the linear transformation. So with this in mind, the first thing that we need to do is identify the standard matrix of this linear transformation. So looking at our given linear transformation, we can rewrite this as the matrix transformation, where we have the three by three matrix, one, one, two, zero, one, 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 three, four, multiplied by the vector in R3 with components x, y, z. So we can see here that we have this three by three matrix A, multiplied by our vector, we'll call it vector V in R3. So this three by three matrix A is our standard matrix of the linear transformation, which we will now use to find a basis for the column space of this linear transformation. Now we know that the pivot columns of a matrix form a basis for the column space of that matrix. So in order to find this basis, we are going to row reduce matrix A augmented with the zero vector to echelon form to identify the pivot columns. So looking at our matrix A and our first pivot position, we wanna use that pivot to eliminate the entry below it by doing minus the first row plus the third row, which leaves us with the row equivalent matrix, one, one, two, zero, one, one, negative one plus one is zero, negative one plus three is two, and negative two plus four is two. Beautiful. So our first column is all set and we can move to our second pivot position. And we will use this pivot to eliminate the entry below it by doing negative two times the second row plus the third row, which leaves us with the row equivalent matrix one, one, two, zero, one, one, zero, negative two plus two is zero, and negative two plus two is zero. And would you look at that? We have successfully attained echelon form. So looking at the row reduced matrix in echelon form, we can see that the first and second columns are the pivot columns, which allows us to conclude that a basis for the column space of our linear transformation is equal to the set of vectors where the first vector is one, zero, one, and our second vector is one, one, three. Now notice here that we have used the pivot columns of matrix A itself for the basis of the column space. And now this is because we know that row operations can change the column space of a matrix as we're seeing with this example. We can see that the columns of the matrix in echelon form are not in the column space of matrix A. Why, you might be asking? Well, notice that the columns of the matrix in echelon form all have zeros in their last entries. So these vectors cannot span the column space of matrix A. And if they can't span the column space of matrix A, they can't be in the basis. So moral of the story, always be careful to use the pivot columns of the matrix itself to form a basis for the column space. Now in part B, we are being asked to find a basis for the null space of our linear transformation. So recall that the spanning set produced by the general solution of the equation, the homogeneous equation, in terms of the free variables, 
forms a basis for the null space of matrix A. So in order to find this basis, we are going to row reduce matrix A augmented with the zero vector to row reduce echelon form to write the basic variables in terms of the free variables. And we're already halfway there. Woohoo! Recall that in part A, we augmented matrix A with the zero vector and row reduced matrix A to echelon form. So this is where we begin. Looking at our second pivot, we want to use that pivot to eliminate the entry above it by doing minus the second row plus the first row, which leaves us with the row reduced matrix 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. So we have attained row reduced echelon form, and this matrix in row reduced echelon form is letting us know that x is equal to minus z, that y is also equal to minus z, and that z is a free variable. So we can write the general solution vector v as the vector in R3 with components x, y, z, where we know that x is equal to negative z, where y is equal to negative z, and z is just itself because it's free. Now, factoring that common scalar z out, we have z times the vector with components negative 1, negative 1, 1. And we can now say that therefore, a basis for the null space of our linear transformation is the set containing the single vector, negative 1, negative 1, 1. Making this our beautiful final answer.